Good morning. My name is Lee Dean. I'm with uh, Cornell University's Plantations Department. I'm the lead arborist here. Um, and this morning I want to briefly go over with you some pruning methods we use during the dormant season for our deciduous trees. Um, this tree here is a sugar maple variety. Uh, first and foremost, it's best to know what type of tree you're pruning so you have an idea of its natural form. Um, and as you can tell as you look through this tree here, that most of its branches are either straight out or up to a 45 degree angle relative to the trunk. Um, so what some of the first things that we need to look for knowing that about this tree are branches that are not to form. And for instance, what I mean by that is say this branch here, you can tell is very tight attachment down here and growing straight up into the main stem of the tree and into the other permanent branches. So what we can do in an instance like that is we're going to remove this particular branch. When we do that, that's going to allow for some of these other better angled branches to mature and grow into our permanent structure. So let me begin by pruning off this branch down here at the base. When we prune, we want to make sure that we're as close to but not into the trunk as we can be. This one does not have a very good branch collar on it, um, so I'm going to prune back as close as I can to this branch and leave it here for now. So, let me prune into that. Okay. And that there you can see we've removed it and we've opened up somewhat of a space in here. But that's sort of the lesser of two evils in the long run because these branches will begin to fill in with time and this space will be occupied by new growth in, in the years to come. So we're not too worried about that. So another type of thing we want to look for on a tree like a sugar maple is that it's excurrent or has a single leader up in the top of the tree. Now you'll notice this particular one, I'll bend it down to, tr to try to get us a little bit closer. You'll notice there's two main leaders competing with each other at the top of this. Now we want for good permanent branch structure to have just one terminal leader. So we can either A, reduce one of the leaders down, or B, prune it completely off to establish a central leader immediately. Because of the size of these two, I'm going to prune immediately off. I'm not going to reduce it. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to reach up in here, and these are the two that I'm talking about that are competing with each other. I'm going to remove this one here, again, close to the stem, but not touching it or damaging the trunk. And the reason that I've removed this one versus that one this one you can see has nice small branches throughout the top of it and those will in time become nice permanent branches. So, so far we've gone over branch form, getting rid of anything that's growing upright or against the tree's natural form and our terminal reduction or removal in order to establish a permanent central leader. And one other thing that we'll go over briefly is removing competitive or thick growth within the tree that's interfering with our other permanent branching. For instance, this particular branch here has two large forking pieces. If we come in and we remove the interior one, what we've done is opened up for more light and airflow to help establish some of these interior branches to grow outward. We've also increased air movement through the tree, light, penetration, um, all by removing just one or two branches like that. So we look through the tree and we're going to continue to do the same type of pruning, removing the interior rubbing or cross-conflicting branches that will damage um, other branches as they touch and the wind moves. We want to get rid of those. So what we're going to do is go through and remove some of these interior branches for purposes of thinning out and increasing air and light.